Hello again. Now, he said he'd gone into semi-retirement from politics, but Nigel Farage is back, leading a brand new party, and he joins us now. Thanks very much for being on the programme. Um, it feels right to start with those local election results. Of course, the Brexit party wasn't standing, um, but it seems like the conclusion drawn by both Labour and the Conservatives is that the public want them to do a deal. What do you think would be the consequences? I don't agree that with happened? that. What the public want is to leave the European Union. You know, we were promised we'd leave on the 29th of March. 500 MPs voted for it. The Prime Minister told us over 100 times we were leaving on that date. The public don't want a deal, and certainly not the deal that Mrs May is talking about this morning, you know, permanent customs union, alignment with single market rules. The public want to leave and for us to get on with the rest of that what do you of think our that, lives. What do you think the consequences would be if... Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn did push forward some kind of customs union proposal. Oh, I think if they push forward with this, it will be seen as a coalition of politicians against the people, and I think uh, millions of people would give up on both Labour and the Conservatives. I really do. So it could be almost like a realignment of This would be the politics. final betrayal. I mean, frankly, if May signs up to this, I can't see the point of the Conservative Party even existing. You know, what's it for? I mean, you've got, you're using some quite loaded language here, the final betrayal, uh, and, yeah. and you're also talking about what the public want. I mean, the, the problem with this, isn't it, is that people want different things. There are clearly some people who support your party well, who would if, like us to leave with no deal, if you but there is the also polling, a lot of people who would like to see a deal or perhaps even to remain in the EU. If you look at the polling, in the last, surely. in the last two months, there's been a remarkable shift in polling in this country. You know, leaving on WTO terms with no deal is now the most popular option by far. But it's far. not a majority, is it? Oh, if you offer people the choice, you know, should we stay and have a second referendum or leave uh, on WTO terms? WTO terms has a majority. But they're not in, the only in choices, every are they? single region of they're England, not the Wales, only apart choices, from London. Are they? Well, it, they are. Either we stay or we leave. I and mean, that's really what it's all about. And, and, and I honestly think if May and Corbyn uh, put together a deal where we leave in name only, but we're stuck inside all the European Union structures, then I think the realignment of British politics will happen even more quickly. I genuinely believe that SW1, the Westminster bubble, uh, not just the politicians, but much, much of the commentary act too, are underestimating the desire for change out there in this country. Let's look at some of uh, the polling, shall we? Uh, you, of course, didn't stand, as we said, uh, in the local elections, but I have to say the Brexit party is looking as if it is going to do extremely well in the European elections. Now, this is the latest polling from YouGov. You're up there on 30%. I mean, how, what, would, what are you expecting to happen? Well, I think that uh, we've clearly done very, very well as a, as, a, as a very new party. We've done well with the UKIP vote. That's almost disappeared. We've done well with the Conservative vote. I think the significance of what you saw on Thursday was... Colin, that, what will be a good night in the, the European elections? Well, let, I want to pin you down. Let me just finish. Let me just finish. The significance of Thursday night is we saw the first cracks in the Labour vote. You know, the Labour parliamentary party are very, very Remain, lots of them pushing uh, for a second referendum and to remain, but there are five million voters out there, Labour voters, who voted leave, particularly in the Midlands, the North and South Wales. And uh, I'd love between now and polling day to have a debate with Jeremy Corbyn about this, because people are very confused as to what Labour's standing for. Is that a challenge? Well, it is a ch if you want, it is a challenge, absolutely. I think if we can dig in, if we can dig in to the Labour vote, then we can surprise even ourselves how well we do on May 23rd. That polling was not looking very good for UKIP, was it? as you mentioned, down on 4%. Yeah. When you see that, do you feel kind of sad or do you actually feel secretly well, you know, 20, a little bit I mean, pleased? 26 years of my life I was with UKIP. I was the leader, the chairman, the national organiser. Um, and, I, you know, for me, leaving UKIP was a difficult thing to do. Uh, but now, uh, frankly, it's past its sell-by date. It serves no purpose. It's done. It's gone. I mean, Tommy Robinson is an advisor to UKIP. Yeah. Uh, one of its uh, MEP candidates have used, has used the N-word, other offensive language yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in videos. It, 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 I, mean, I, I mean, how would you define racism? Oh, well, is, is... In, in, in the case of that particular uh, candidate, it's just outright abuse. You know, offensive abuse. Um, and there's no doubt they've gone in that direction. Frankly, you know, we, we won't even be discussing them after this election. Is, is UKIP a racist party or at risk of becoming uh, one? I think that it's attracted certain individuals uh, that I would never have allowed to join UKIP. OK, well, now let's talk about the Brexit party, shall we? Who's funding you? Amazing. So we just yesterday, we hit 85,000 yesterday, registered supporters, all paying £25. Work it out. We've raised, getting on for £2 million through individual people joining through our website. Um, and and I, I can't think 
that any other party in the UK has ever raised money like that. You've um, said in an interview previously that you've received one big donation. Oh, one sixty. Who's that from? Yeah. Oh no 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 no. Oh. Oh, yes, I'm really going to tell you his name, aren't I? Well, so, why not? Because, you, because then you would all hound him. We this will... is the new transparent politics, yeah, yeah. isn't it? And, and, and yeah, and we'll be declaring it at the end of July. So why don't you just tell me, then? I don't see why. I, I, I don't see why one individual... Well, I tell you what, if everybody else will, that's fine. But you know what will happen? If I tell you the name of this person, you will hound him, all of you. You'll be outside his house for the next three weeks. So, no. And anyway, it's irrelevant. It's a small donation. It's a small donation of £100,000. We've raised, I repeat, nearly £2 million in £25 from individual... Doesn't he deserve some public. scrutiny? And he'll, get it, and he'll get it all in good time. Who's funding Change UK? Well, I'll be asking them. Well, there you are. There you go. Uh, I also want to ask you about Claire Fox as well. Yeah. Um, one of your uh, candidates at uh, the top of your list in the North West. Now, of course, there has been some media attention on the fact that she hasn't disavowed um, some of these comments that were made uh, in 1993 defending the army. Well, this is a classic stitch-up smear story. Number one, she made no comments herself in 1993, but she was a member mm -hmm. of a left-wing organisation who were Irish Republicans. Nothing the, unusual in that. And, and what they said, the Revolutionary Communist Party, of which she was a member, they yeah, said, yeah, yeah. we defend the right to the Irish people to take whatever measures are necessary in their struggle for freedom. I mean, that was made after I think we may be looking at Warrington. Yeah, let's just be very clear, shall we? Claire Fox says there were dreadful things that happened before the peace agreement, which, 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 which she hates the fact that, that they occurred. She supports the Good Friday Agreement and does not want politics to be pursued by violent means. And the irony of, being attacked, of her being attacked when Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell were personal friends of Sinn Féin IRA, well, uh, personal friends, per, you know, attended Palestinian martyr ceremonies, uh, you know, commemorating people who tortured and murdered Israeli athletes. Uh, you know, frankly... Just to be clear... Claire, Claire Fox, frankly, this is an irrelevant conversation. Jer Jer Jeremy Corbyn has said he has spoken to all sides in the debate. I have also asked Jeremy Corbyn about his, uh, you know, relationship with the IRA in previous interviews. So I think it is yeah, fair to well, do the same. It's fair to say that he knew Adams and McGuinness very, very well. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, now, I also want to ask you about some comments uh, that you yourself made um, quite recently yeah. as well. Uh, this was at the Lock Haven University in the United uh, States, and you were talking about immigration and integration, mm. and you said about this. Uh, I could take you to a town called Oldham in the north of England, where literally on one side of the streets where everybody is white and on the other side of the street everybody is black. Yeah. There is no assimilation. Yeah, well, sadly true. Um, I was first put onto this by Charles Wheeler, the late uh, respected journalist, who Tony Blair commissioned him to do a report as to what had happened in Oldham, why there'd been riots, and this is pretty much what he told me. But what I don't understand... Uh, and, then, and then, in 2012, Oldham Council themselves, having looked at the 2011 census, so we have a massive problem here of division. Um, I could even go to The Guardian's northern correspondent, Helen Pidd. And if you look at it, you've got one ward in Oldham that is 97% white, and literally adjoining it, the next ward, that is 66% black. There is a 66 massive... 66% black? Yes. Because if you look however, at the census, However, however, some streets... The, the census, some streets are well over 90. 1.2% of the population is black. Are you uh, sure you have you been to right? Oldham? I have, yes. Well, I tell you what, let's go this week, shall we? And, and, and let, let's okay, well, go this I week. I will go to Oldham. And I will you. show you, and I will show you, you... there is complete segregation with Oldham. I'm, now, I'm, now can I, if can you're I just, arguing, can I just be really clear? If I'm you're right. arguing for segregation, that's fine. I'm arguing for integration. Can and I, just, I think there's a real problem look, here. I'm, I'm actually not talking necessarily about integration because there is a complex debate on that. What I'm talking about is the specifics of facts because 1.2% of the population in Oldham is black. So I just want Should to we just try this down. again? Should we just try this again? In one of the wards in Oldham, it is 97% white, and the adjoining ward is 66% black. Now, you, you can believe me or disbelieve me, but they are the facts. And I, I'm, I'm making an argument here for integration. What's wrong with that? OK. Uh, what's the uh, Brexit Party's um, policy on immigration? Uh, we want a sensible immigration where we don't discriminate against people that come from India, Australia and the rest of the world. OK. Uh, now, just finally, who do you think should be the next Conservative Party leader? I'm not sure that debate's really relevant. I, I, I mean, I know people talk about Boris or Dominic Raab. Well, both of them voted for Theresa May's treaty um, in the final analysis. I'm not sure either of them really would deliver a proper Brexit. Steve Baker? I, I, th you I think, there's, be, a, be more I to think there's a different conversation coming here. I think maybe the Conservative Party, as it is, isn't really fit for purpose. Maybe we're thinking really here now about a complete realignment of British politics. The two-party system does not work.
They serve no one but themselves. And I believe if ever there was a moment when that two-party structure would break down and be replaced by something new, it's now. And that's what we in the Brexit party are going to try and do. Okay. Ambitious, I agree. Nigel Farage, thank you for being on the programme.